I'm Lowell Thomas. And for a moment, I want to do something that perhaps is a little different. And I hope you'll take that literally. All my life, I've been interested in the unusual, the different, different places, unusual people, unusual objects. And what is wrong with that? After all, there can be only one Dalai Lama, one Lawrence of Arabia, one Count Luckner the Sea Devil in World War I, one Doolittle, one Lindbergh. Unique? Ah, but that is what has made them newsworthy. And most of my life has been spent in search of the newsworthy all over the world. And in the past 20 odd years, I have seen many changes in the world of radio. As you undoubtedly know, there are now some 5,500 radio stations in the United States, AM and FM. And the chances are that you have heard the sales talks from literally hundreds of them. And you may have discovered that those sales talks are discouragingly similar. But there is one that is unlike any other station anywhere. I happen to know a little about radio stations, having been on the air for more than 35 years and on this unique station for more than 20 years. And the name of that station, WJR Detroit. This is Detroit, 12th largest city in the world. Its river is part of the St. Lawrence Seaway. The river brings coal and iron ore to Detroit's mills and factories. And today those mills and factories are producing at an all-time high, giving Detroit an unprecedented prosperity. Three miles from the river and downtown Detroit stands the Fisher Building, headquarters for WJR, the radio station that is one of a kind. And here is one of Detroit's best known entertainers to tell you about it, Mr. J.P. McCarthy. This is J.P. McCarthy. Have a nice evening. I'll see you tomorrow morning at this same time. Good night, everybody. I work here, here being the 21st floor of the Fisher Building and the location for the main studios of WJR in Detroit. You know, there are lots of interesting ways to look at Detroit. If you're interested in sales, for example, you can look at it as the nation's fifth richest market. Not a bad place to run a radio station, right? Now, not just an ordinary, everyday, run-of-the-mill radio station, mind you, but a radio station with a unique point of view in terms of programming. Now, what makes WJR unique? Lots of things, really. But most importantly, a unique method of programming with something for everyone every single day. Why don't we let some of our own people tell you their own story the way they do every day? For baseball fans, WJR has veteran sportscaster Ernie Harwell. What does it take to be a real good pinch hitter, Al? Well, it's got to be a fellow that doesn't strike out too much. He'll strike mm -hmm. out once in a while, but it's got to be a fellow that can get a piece of the ball, and if he can be a fellow that can hit a long fly ball, that much the better. Keep the ball from the ground. Keep hitting the double plays. What's the toughest part of strategy in running the ball game? I think personally is handling your pitching staff and handling your personnel. Harwell's pregame interviews with important people in baseball, like Al Lopez, the former great manager of the Chicago White Sox, provide an interesting backdrop to the game itself. Ernie's play-by-play -play of all Tiger games is vivid and knowledgeable. The Tigers have managed only four hits off Johnny Bazaar. Norman Cash coming to bat now. Trailing one to nothing in the sixth inning with nobody on base and one man down for Detroit. Bazard about ready to go. Cash steps in. Here's the windup by Johnny. The pitch, it's right in there for a strike called on Norman Cash. Now Cash steps out a moment, back into the batter's box. Bazard looks in to get his sign. Here's the windup, the pitch. There's a long drive to deep right. It's out of here. A home run by Norman Cash. And the Tigers have tied the game at one to one here in the sixth inning. Well, sir, Storyteller Bud Guest, the secretary of the sunny side of the street club, and announcer Charlie Park. Good morning. You remember the big problem? 
<laughs> the big problems, certainly. We have big problems every morning, Monday through Saturday. Well, the one that I was referring to was the one we mentioned just the other day about which way the water goes down the bathtub drain. Oh, that's colossal. That's north colossal. and south of the equator. Does she go down clockwise, north of the equator, or counterclockwise, or vice versa? At any rate, Ray D. O. Dyler, who started the whole mess, is back in with us again. He says since we talked about it the other morning, he tried the bathroom tub 20 times. And then to make sure, he tried the kitchen sink 20 times. And this was during his noon hour. He writes to me, Dear Bud, I had no time to eat my lunch the other day, but I found out that the water did drain out in a counterclockwise fashion every time. Now then, we have also heard from Mrs. Edward Durkee, a good member of the Sunnyside Club of long standing, who lives in Elk Rapids, Michigan. She writes to us that when she reheard our report the other morning, she turned on the left-hand faucet in the wash bowl, and the water ran out counterclockwise. But the water from the right-hand faucet ran out clockwise. So what do you make of that, she says. Frankly, I don't know what to make of it. Do you, Charlie? WJR has football, too, with the voice of sports director Bob Reynolds. Long as the flanker, wide to the right. Max McGee is in fairly tight. Back goes Carr to throw again. Gets good protection. Throws a wobbly one. Rasmussen got it at the 36. Over to the sidelines for the 30. 25, 20, 15. Gets a great block. Touchdown. Wayne Walker drew a key block down. And the touchdown as he grabbed it at the 36-yard line. And it's a 36-yard touchdown run for Wayne Rasmussen on the intercepted pass of Bart Starr. Starr's arm was jarred just as he threw it, and it was a wobbly one up in the air like a wounded duck. And Rasmussen picked it off on the 36-yard line, got a great block on the 15 on the far side from Wayne Walker, and went in untouched for the touchdown. Bob, I think they had planned a crisscross pass pattern there, and Fleming and McGee bumped into each other as they were going over the center, and that certainly helped Rasmussen fly. led by Ed Fleming and the rookie from Purdue. Barr is the flanker wide to the left this time. Cogdill is out a little bit to the right. Bum looking over the defense, fakes once, fakes twice, drops straight back in the hole, looks for somebody's going for the long bump. Got Terry Barr down there, and Terry's got it! Touchdown! Long bomb to Terry Barr. Terry picks it off at the The five. Detroit area is full of sports fanatics. Football, pro and college, baseball, basketball, hockey, you name it. But there are also a lot of people here who like a very different kind of entertainment. And WJR supplies that, too. Here is Carl Haas, the station's director of fine arts and a member of the president's cultural advisory commission. If any proof is needed that rhythm is the most important ingredient in music, then what you just heard was that proof. It was the beginning of the violin concerto by Cacciaturian, a composer who is particularly known for his predominance of rhythm. I'd like to illustrate on the piano that very element that you just heard in the violin concerto. There is rhythm above all, unless you count this a melody. mighty monotonous to have this continue throughout the piece, the Toccata for Piano by Cacciaturian. But listen to it in its finished form. Listen to how Cacciaturian clothes this skeleton of rhythm with a melody which is derived from the very rhythm that he so eminently displays.
Bruce often appears as a recitalist and lecturer. Here he is during a benefit for the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. The Anatomy of a Bestseller. What is it? This is the Focus Show. Every day, Lee Murray, our women's editor, and Jimmy Lance interview the famous and the merely interesting. On location or in the studio, they focus in on a variety of people. <laughs> she became angrier and angrier and sputtered and said, I have heard that people who work in book departments are queer. And they also have their idiot ass and crassies. <laughs> yes. Doctors, uh, authors, uh, artists, uh, lawyers, uh, even uh, Indian uh, chiefs. Uh, Lee and Jimmy meet them all. Day after day, they talk to people in the news. From Haley Mills to Detroit's Mayor Kavanaugh. <laughs> you said human values, Mayor Kavanaugh. You have eight children and probably one of the busiest jobs in this country. How do you maintain a good family relationship? Well, it isn't an easy thing to do. Uh, I don't have any advice, I suppose, to give to anyone in the raising of eight uh, children, because I think, um, you know, it's by accident that you almost get them raised, uh, and the help of uh, God, really. Uh, I've learned to stay out of the way in the morning when those eight <laughs> get up. Uh, but I think the big thing is to try and devote at least part of your, uh, of your week, uh, maybe one day a week, this is generally what I try to do, set aside for uh, these young children and particularly in a job that like this because of the publicity that's attached to it and so on it makes it more difficult to maintain that close relationship and you have to work just a little harder at it and um, so far i think we're succeeding i'm sure you are with wjr is respected for the thoroughness the completeness of its news reporting is that anything new on the defense bill? No. I've got a tape here from Jerry Ford, but I haven't been able yet to reach Senator Hart. I know. The Senate's adjourned. Try and pat McNamara at his home. We've got to have something from both sides before 5 o'clock. Get both sides. That's the essence of WJR reporting. But its news philosophy goes much further than the political or the police beat. Brent, how did the market act yesterday? Well, Dave, yesterday was a pretty good day in the market. Here's a WJR reporter digging for facts for the daily program, Business Barometer. Over $2. Well, 7 million shares, it's a pretty nice volume. And the thing that really looked nice about it was the broad participation by various industry groups. Complete news coverage also means keeping rural listeners informed daily. That's the job of Marshall Wells, WJR's flying farm editor, who uses his plane in order to interview farmers, county agents, and farm authorities all over Michigan, northern Ohio, and northern Indiana. The boats are Special news includes complete coverage of such important events as the Mackinac Yacht Race on Lake Huron. We're over the fleet right now, and we're going down to spot some of the early leaders. The yachts are pretty well spaced out, and it appears that Apache is in the lead. Halfway around the world from the yachtsman, here's another example of news in depth. Our news director, Frank Tomlinson, in Vietnam. Last year, I spent five weeks in Vietnam, much of it with Michigan's Governor George Romney. I reported back daily to WJR listeners the travels of the governor as he met with brass, talked to Michigan GIs, and charmed the children of Vietnam. And with CBS network veterans like Lowell Thomas and Walter Cronkite, WJR's news coverage is really complete, or as we like to say, one of a kind. Now here's an example of WJR programming that's also pretty unique. Nikki Lane is back with us again today. Nikki hails from... Vocalist uh, uh, Jack Harris, Harris and Tennessee. guest, and along with Jimmy Clark and the boys. Unique, but you know, a live orchestra isn't something you find around many stations these days. Good. Well, while you're here, Nikki, we'd like to have you do a little 
vocalizing with me, duet wise. You feel up to it? Sure do. Okay, let's be away. Here we go. Oh, oh when the saints come marching in, when the saints come marching in. You'll find that kind of carrying on every day here on WJR, supplemented, of course, by the variety programs of Arthur Godfrey and Art Linkletter. Now, you've seen some of the people on WJR. What about some of the people who listen? Well, they're homeowners, mostly. I'd say Detroit's a city of homeowners. 70% of the people in the metropolitan area own their own homes. That's a record among major U.S. cities. And Detroiters have money to spend. The metro area has 15% more disposable income than the national average. And when they're not at home, they're on wheels. As you know, four out of five cars have a radio. And WJR penetrates deeply into that in-car audience. Actually, Michigan has more freeways than New York or California. Very few commuter trains or buses. Most everyone drives to work. And it's the same throughout WJR's primary daytime coverage area. 112 counties in Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, plus 24 counties in southern Ontario. However, penetration is what counts. And the last Nielsen coverage study shows these counties as having 50% or more homes tuned in to WJR. But it doesn't stop there. WJR penetrates 35 to 49% of homes in these counties and 20 to 34% in these. And these figures were established before CBS programming and full baseball coverage substantially increased WJR's penetration. Although no research is available, WJR reaches loud and clear in these southern Ontario counties, where one-fourth of all Canadians live. Over 20 million persons live in this overall area. No two are quite alike in their listening tastes. Yet WJR manages to keep most of them happy. It recognizes that its listeners are individuals, such as tourists. Tourism has grown to a billion-dollar industry in Michigan especially since it's become famous as the water winter wonderland. People come from all over to vacation here. And the first station they're likely to pick up because of the strength of its 50,000 watt clear channel signal is WJR. And once they start listening, they stick with us. Now, what about the typical WJR audience? The kind of individuals they are and what they do for a living we found there are all sorts of people in all sorts of different situations. Banks in Chicago today announced they are increasing their prime rates of interest on commercial loans. Who is burning with ambition to become the next Julie Harris. I think a technique can be learned. I think you can be taught to speak correctly, to move correctly. The good and joy steers 24 and 3 quarters up to 25 and 3 quarters. On the Chicago grain future trade, as of the noon hour, wheat is one quarter lower, one eighth higher. Corn one eighth. There's news about an important White House visitor, about new developments in the Kremlin, and a major announcement from City Hall. Palace, the Count de Luna enters. He has come hoping to see the lovely Leonora. But he has barely approached the entrance to the palace when the sound of a lute 
and then the voice of the mysterious troubadour is heard serenading Leonora. The Count hides and listens. Leonora comes out. Here's a set by Mickey. He delivers. It's a line drive to center field. Stanley comes over. He'll make the catch. Here's a tag by Weiss at third. And in focus tomorrow, screen star Charlton Heston in a slightly rusting suit of armor. And we'll take a nostalgic... Bar out to the right. Cogdill to the left. Plum calling the signal. Grabs the ball. Drops straight back. Pretty good protection this time. Fires it in the end zone. And Denny gets for Kramer. Touchdown! Oh, I'd love uh, to hear from Jimmy and the yes, boys. Yes, sir, and they have a little toe tapper. This thing moves along about, uh, oh, what, uh, 65 in the 45 miles zone. I bet like you that. I'll have trouble keeping my feet still. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's another opinion about which direction water swirls down a drain or on any subject, write to me, Bud Guest, the Sunnyside Secretary, and I'll see that it's brought to the attention of our membership. No matter the age, or the income, or the taste, WJR has something for everyone. And that means the cumulative one-week audience is in the millions. And that's the reason that local advertisers get results. The reason the national advertiser, who wants deep daytime penetration of 112 counties, gets results. Every bit of responsible research confirms that WJR is not only the best radio station, but the best single medium to sell this big, prosperous market. A unique operation? You bet it is. Of course it is. In fact, I'd say the WJR, with something for everyone, is certainly one of a kind.